Hi, this is Erika Kasab from a Small Robot Studio. Today I'm going to show you how layers work in Nomad Sculpt. You'll find the layer menu at the top right under the icon that looks like stacked paper. We can add one right away. For those with a 2D background that maybe work on Procreate or similar, this other menu could be misunderstood for layers, but it's not. This is a list of objects in your scene, which you can separate by mesh, individual geometries, or by grouping them together. Anyway, in 3D, 3D layers will record position offsets or painted materials. For instance, I can change the character expression or even paint on top something, and the layer will record this information independent from the base. By the way, layers are not available for primitives. You will have to validate them before you can add a layer. Layers allow me to work non-destructively. In other words, you can make changes to a sculpt without overwriting the original data, which remains available in case you want to revert it. Let me elaborate to make this clear. Normally, every change we make means that a previous step gets deleted from the undo history. Sure, I can go back several steps, but as soon as I make a new change, the work ahead is overwritten. This is known as a linear or destructive workflow. This is where layers have an amazing value. At any point, I can go back to the base layer to make adjustments and easily bring back what I worked on in a layer. Great whenever you are detailing, like adding wrinkles or pores. One of my favorite things about layers is the intensity control, this yellow bar. It allows you to tone down any change that you just made. The rest of the buttons are pretty straightforward and the eye will turn on and off the layer. The arrows will allow me to change the position, the way in which they are stacked. This pencil will let me rename them. Of course, the rubbish bin will delete them, these two papers will duplicate them, and this last one will merge the top one with the bottom one. Watch out, if you tap merge on the bottom layer, it's gonna merge with the base and therefore it's gonna bake those changes. They're gonna be there permanently and you won't be able to go back. I'll explain this last three dot button later because I want to focus first on tools which are considered more fun because they have more practical uses. Although, before I do so, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the group of lovely people who support the channel via Patreon. Thank you so much, muchas muchas gracias. Our Patreon supporters get access to a growing library of 3D assets including this retopologized character, ready for adding expressions. Learn more at patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio. When working with several layers, make sure that you have selected the one that you actually want to work on. Especially when painting, consider that stacking them could be overlapping information. I could try to be painting something in red, but it's not showing up. This is because I have a layer on top of that, with color that is hiding that. If you select the base, the changes that you make will be permanent. You can easily recognize that the base is selected because there is a red dot next to the layers icon, even when you close the menu. You can use any brush to work on layers, but Nomad has two special brushes for them. The layer brush is gonna sculpt by limiting the maximum height displacement. In other words, I can push up or down and there's gonna be a limit. Even if I stop the stroke and I start a new one, if I don't change the intensity or size, they're gonna have a very similar height. This brush is incredibly useful if I want to do continuous lines in more than one stroke. It's gonna be even better if I go into the pressure menu, turn off radius and intensity so it ignores the pressure that I put on my pen, and inside the stroke menu, I'm going to increase the lazy rope, stabilizer, stroke smoothing, and snap radius. The settings are going to give me an increasing control over the line. Great if I wanted to do some paneling. A great tool for those that work on props or hard surface sculpting. I have found that the layer brush with a few adjustments can be really useful for sculpting stylized hair. I'll make a specific video to explain all that but it's worth to experiment with it. The other layer brush is Delete Layer. 
Anything that this brush touches will delete layer information while keeping the base intact. You can use it to refine your work or delete details that you didn't quite like. If you make the brush relatively big while lowering its intensity, you can use it to create a fading effect on what you sculpted with the layer brush, similar to what the smooth tool would create. This is before and this is after. You can also change its settings if you wanted to cut sharper lines. Something cool about Nomad is that even if you change the topology of your mesh, for instance doing a voxel remesh, the layer information is still preserved. This is very uncommon, most software will just get rid of the layers. Honestly, layers are really cool. I love to use them to create expressions or detail, but there's so many creative applications to them. I was recently impressed by the techniques that Sin from the channel Send Art Design uses. She breaks objects, she creates stylized explosions, and even exports those into Blender to convert them into animation. It's really neat. I've included a link to her channel in the description below. Finally, I'm gonna go back to the layers menu and explain these three dots that give you access to some advanced features. The top part is gonna give you intensity control of each channel. For instance, this layer recorder, the position of the fur, color, and roughness information. If I bring down the position slider down, it's gonna disappear those changes that are made, or if I get to negative values, it's gonna push them inward. Maybe I want to keep the color, but I want to get rid of this polished, shiny look. In that case, I'm going to go into the roughness channel and bring down this intensity slider. Or if I want a subtle color, I can bring this slider down. If you use the main slider, it's going to turn off all the channels at the same time. This bottom portion is going to let us extract as a new mesh anything that we sculpted in a layer. This is going to be an independent geometry in the scene menu. Depending on the closing action that I choose, is the result that I'm going to get. By tapping on the question mark, you can get a brief explanation of each, but I also recommend, of course, experimenting with them. So yeah, these are layers in a nutshell. I hope you found this overview helpful. I'm always excited to hear about creative ways in which you can use all of these tools. And I love to see your work, so feel free to share it via social media. I'll see you soon and happy sculpting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.